Good evening, my viewers. This is George On Deck with the latest edition of the George On Deck Show. I'm very proud tonight to have as my guest a man who's in the expert, who's an expert in the field of home security. He owns a company in that field. Uh, but I'm also proud to say he's my friend. His, his sister, Rosa Calderon, has lived next to me in Society Hill, too, for about 15 years and uh, in Peekskill. And one thing I have to say about Mr. Calderon, he's an immigrant originally from Peru, and he's a successful businessman today. And, uh, and Francisco, tell us a little bit about how you came to America and how you came now to own your own security company. Well, I came to New York uh, like 16 years ago. Right. Um, I originally, like you say, from Peru, from Lima, from the capital. And uh, my sisters and brothers and my mom came to America before me. And that's what uh, my mom uh, get to be a citizen from the United States. And that's when the, all the papers start to roll to be I was the only one left in Peru. All my sisters and brothers were here, so uh, I get the invitation, uh, I get all the documents to fill, and that's when I, I was able to come here in 2000. Mm -hmm. And uh, from the beginning, I was not a citizen. I, I had the option in 2007. But before I was, uh, like you say, uh, I have my green card, and I was able to work and do everything like uh, any citizen here. And both you and your sister are hard-working people. Uh, I know your sister travels into the city every day and I yes. think she's a financial expert. Or, or yeah, she works for another company. It's like an assistant of the CEO of the company. Uh -huh. And yeah, she's been traveling to the city maybe the last more 25 years. Something wow, like that, that. that has to be tough on her, you know. Uh, oh yeah, I wake up early in the morning. I was there yeah. too. I was for two years working in the city right. too. And then I, I like uh, Westchester County, so I decided to move up here. You speak here. English very well. Did you learn English in your country, or did you learn it since you came to America? I learned in Peru. I never know I, I was going to be able to speak in this way English when I came here. And you speak very well. Because uh, they, they tried to teach me in, in, the, in the Peruvian schools English, but I was not that good. Until one day I discovered I was able to, to to talk and to speak with some uh, Canadian uh, friend. So in that time, I say, well, something happened when I was a child because all my sister and brother speak English at home oh. because they were they went to an American school. So the first language the they had, school they learned was English. In Peru. In Peru. Because mm -hmm. my dad is the doctor and he worked with this American company wow. in the middle of the mountains. Wow. in the south of Peru, and there was an American company who uh, struck co copper. Copper. So, so they have uh, the copper mine, and they have the, the town where everybody lives. So we have schools, we have swimming pools, we have everything. Like a, wow. It's a small town from the United States sitting in the middle of the mountains of Peru. Really? It's similar to the United yeah, States? Yeah, it's similar. It is the houses, poor, the way, the telephones. It isn't poor like I picture a lot of Peru to be, you know. I, I've been in countries such as Vietnam where the people were very poor. And yeah, but that that will you will not see that poor Peru. because it, in that part in Peru, yeah, is maybe you near Lima, Peru. Or? No, this is a uh, in uh, Solid Peru Copper Corporation. That company is there, mm -hmm. and it's been there from the 50s, 30s, I think. So my dad started to work there. Mm -hmm. That's the I think that's what I understand. What I I start to learn English. Because I, I hear, you know, they say when you are a kid, when you're a baby, if you hear the first language, it's what you really want to understand wow. and, and, and learn. Because I have friends who speak, who have an, a very accent, a lot of accent. Right. They speak very good because they went to school five yeah. years to study English. But the accent is really coming from when you are a baby. So here my sister and my brother are speaking at home English all the time, wow. only speaking in Spanish to my, my dad, my parents. You know, one thing, Francisco, I advocated and I go to school board meetings. At one time they only had bilingual language education from kindergarten to third grade. Mm -hmm. I think now the Pete School schools have it from kindergarten to twelfth grade. And with the big Spanish influence in 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 Peekskill, in New York, in America, I think it's important for um, 
American citizens who speak English to speak Spanish, and for Spanish people who came here to learn English. Uh, you can get the fruits of America by integrating into the language and getting to know our businesses and our customs, such as you have done. Now, mm -hmm. how did you start out uh, your first job in America? Well, I have many jobs uh, when I came here. I worked for uh, different companies, and I don't know if I can mention here, but yeah. and, um, um, you can mention it. So I, I started like a sales in, in Sears, of course, because I, my second, my first language is Spanish, right. so I was right. working there. I work uh, UPS in the in the mornings from uh, mm -hmm. I think it was two o'clock in the morning to eight o'clock. So I've been to different jobs, and then I work in the city, like I told you before, uh, doing security uh, fire and alarm systems. Uh -huh. And I also work for another telephone company, install telephone systems. But then I decide to move up here and here, and then, then I start to work skill. in Pigskill. I live the first three years with my sister, Rosa. Uh -huh. So I was your neighbor. Who's for a lovely a neighbor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then after that, I... Um, I moved to Norway Plains to work with this company uh, with security system too. Yeah. So there, I worked there for four years and I learned a lot of stuff. Everything I and learned. And now you're the owner of your own yeah, company, I in believe. In 2007, I started my own business, but it was only part-time. Now, a big subject in New York, in Peekskill, in all cities is home security. Mm -hmm. Why is it important for a homeowner today to have security cameras, uh, security mm -hmm. systems. And I'll give an example of up where I live. It's a very nice development. I live in a condominium development. And I heard one day that somebody came out of their house and four tires were missing off their car. And I, I think it's such a quiet neighborhood. How could that happen? But if we had security cameras on our houses, the culprit would have been caught. So maybe you want to talk a little bit in what you're an expert on today. Well, um, security cameras, yeah, they've been changing a lot and the prices are very low right now and these days. You can find very... But uh, what I'm more want interested in is why why we need security cameras. I have them on my car, by the way, because <laughs> people have done vandalism to my car. Yeah, you, ha you can do the, the cameras inside the car. Well, it's important to have it because it, it trace people, cars, or situation, they happen outside your home or different business. So, like when they happen, something like you say, the four tire, maybe they don't have a camera, they're pointing to a car, but they have a camera in the corner. Mm -hmm. And if each house, they have a, ha a camera outside, they will protect them to see if something is still, something break outside. But also it will help the police department to go to each camera. Look what find. just happened in New York, York City with that terrorist who put the bombs in two different areas. Yeah. Security cameras caught him, yeah. right? They don't go to just one. They go to 20 cameras yeah. and go they People download. don't realize how they're being surveyed every <laughs> place they go today now. And it's, it's you could be yeah. in a Dunkin' Donuts and they have five cameras there. You're, you could be out on the street walking and you're being surveyed all the time. And yeah, I think it's good, you know. Yeah, I, yeah, like you just ways. mentioned, uh, uh, Dunkin' Donuts, I, I go there and I, I take a look because I'm, I'm in that business, but people don't realize they're being watching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you don't do nothing wrong, it's not right, really right, to be right. scared or nothing. But that's the reason you, I think people have, need to install security cameras in their homes and to feel more comfortable. Like I have my brother who live in Ohio, they have s security alarm system. Oh. And they're being okay, but one night they forget to put it and that night they get robbed. Wow. And the two guys that get in from the garage they got in and they took everything in the first floor. It was in the purse, the wow. wife. Wow. So they left and they find the guys uh, uh, that morning, the police, because they were now, searching. Now, do this? I have a friend who has a house in Florida and a house in Cortland. Mm -hmm. He can see everything that's happening in his house in Florida through a security camera and a computer setup does he have. Yes, and yeah. the phones too. Now, the smartphones, you can be able to watch all the cameras there. Yeah, but I hear there's one drawback to the, either the smart TVs or the smart phones, that they can track you and see what's going on in your living room. Is that true? Or yeah, or I hear not? something about the smart so TVs. Samsung? They have Samsung, they have something. That is unbelievable. You have to turn it on. It's something like you, you have wow. an option to turn it off. So they not. can be observing you? Yeah, they can. Yeah. Wow. 
But uh, they, they use amazing. more of that to check what you like to see or watch or the data. It's more of the data. Do you think that's a coming thing that the, what the police cars have now and what I have in my car, a, uh, a cam, a cam quarter mm -hmm. that uh, if somebody damages your car, it, c it can be uh, recorded and yeah. you can. Yeah, because hood you know, cams, back, back hood in the days, cam. yeah, wait, yeah I mean, uh, back in the days you don't have uh, those cameras, the mini cameras. Now you can put an SD card. Yeah. Inside a little camera, and card. and they have motion, so only record when something move around the car, so you don't lose uh, the battery oh, wow. life. Is is <coughs> yeah, and I think uh, you know the car, the police car, have for many years now, but yeah. the new technology go to high definition. But now. also, if they put cameras on police officers, there shouldn't be a turn off switch, you know. <laughs> 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 but maybe I shouldn't get into that. That. Well, I don't know they have the ability to Unless do that. it was just for like an emergency where they have to go. Well, if I don't know they have a free time, like you go into some place to have a coffee, I don't think they need right, to record right, that, so, so right, they have to right, turn it right, off. Right, but right. Uh, they're on duty, uh, they have to turn it on. Yeah. What other parts of the security field? Uh, alarm systems, like uh, uh, I, I think that's very important to have in homes because they also protect your family and protect your uh, stuff you have inside the house. And in these days, you can turn it on and off us using your smartphone. And the more people are aware that your house is protected, the less likely they're going to break. Yeah, some too. people I have, uh, I install uh, alarm system in their houses, and they don't like the signs they go in the, in the garden, they call garden signs. Yes. And I ask them why they don't want this. You want to tell people you go, go away from my house, this house is protected, and say no, because they think they, they're going to bring more. At attraction that they have something special. No. You know what I think happens? Some people have the signs, they don't have the systems, but just because they have the sign there, the burglars won't touch it because they don't even want to take the risk. And I don't understand mm -hmm. how burglars could be so dumb in a <laughs> bank where they know they can get 20 years in jail, they know they're going to be taped, and they go in there and try to stick up a bank. Well, I never, I never. Until I came here to America, I never know you can go to the bank and handle a paper and say, this is a robbery, you give me the money. Really? Yeah. They I never, don't I have bank robberies in They have it, but they have with guns and everything, and wow. just, you don't want to be there, so it's different. So, but right here, yeah. Well, we could get on to another subject, but it doesn't pertain to this. But it's even worse, a b guy goes into a bank and uh, with a gun or, or whatever and says, give me the money he gets two or three thousand dollars and he goes to jail for 20 years but a bank president can tell five thousand tellers to add illegal accounts to people's uh, uh, accounts and he don't go to jail at all oh, yeah. you, you know that don't yeah, seem yeah, I hear fair the story about the bank yeah yeah I, I won't mention the name of the bank because I don't want to get sued but it's it's a yeah. disgrace and the CEO seemed to think it was all right it when was right, Congress yeah. was saw investigating, like investigating. Him, yeah I, I saw it on the TV and I was feeling bad too for those people because they're working like worker like you and me so so they Francisco, don't have the money to protect do you yourself. get to go back to Peru every so often? I was in the beginning, yeah, the first year, maybe the first uh, eight years, yeah, I was going every often. But mm, last time, thanks, I was there in July this year. In July. After sure. six, seven years. I went to visit my dad and my mom. They li they're still living and there. And how young is your dad? You were telling <laughs> me before my dad, the show. My dad is going to be 92. What do you think it attributes his long life and your mom's? I've met your mom. She's a very nice person. Thank you. She comes visits Rosa very yeah, often. Yeah, every year she's coming to yeah. visit us. Well, do they eat good foods or uh, healthy foods? Well, my dad is a doctor, so he knows what to a eat doctor. and how to eat. A doctor? See, I never knew that about yeah, you. Yeah, he's an eye doctor, so wow. as a surgeon. Yeah. He's a successful doctor wow. there. Is too. he still practicing? No, yeah, he's, he's still practicing. Really? He's not At doing any mean surgery, but he's uh, he has this optic center where you can go and have classes. You know, he measure you, everything, and so it's very that is unique amazing. to see him, 92 years old, working, walking like nothing, and moving around and it's, it's very good I it's like amazing it. what some people can do at an older age yeah. the most amazing person I had on my TV show was a Captain Miller he lived to be about a hundred hundred and one wow. but up to 98 or 99 he was riding a motorcycle and he was flying a plane a good friend of mine is a, a pilot of Cessna planes and he was a friend of his at the airport wow. It's amazing some people with the longevity and 
I don't know yeah. if it's eating good food, exercising, but some people are truly amazing, it's like your I father. I think, like you say, it's the food. It's the food. He's still taking naps. He uh -huh. was able to take That's a power nap. I even take power naps, <laughs> being 39 plus. <laughs> yeah. I won't tell my audience I'm 74 because they think I'm a lot younger than that, you know? You look like younger. Thank you. Yeah. You're about 30, right? 35? <laughs> I will not tell everybody to. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Only your hairdresser knows for sure. Yeah, right? she, is, she knows. But um, let's get back to America and this flag, Francisco. The opportunity in America, isn't it great if you can apply yourself, it especially is. if you're an immigrant who comes here? It is true. Is that when you see it from outside, you don't think it's going to be like that. But um, again, my case was maybe different because I grew up in an American company uh, uh -huh. town. Right. So the rules and everything and the way we were living there were like uh, Americans. Uh -huh. So we don't have that shock or that, that change in culture to come here. So I feel more like an American when Did I was born. Did your mom work as well, or was she a stay-at-home mom? Mom was a nurse. My mom. Oh wow! She went to school to be a nurse. Mm -hmm. uh, then after when they married with my dad, uh, she was not. Uh, I have five brothers and sisters, so we were six. So wow. I don't think uh, my mom can Did work. Did your brothers <laughs> and sisters come to America too? Or yes, are they, still they come before me. Everybody. Are they spread through all throughout between the United States? Between California, Ohio. Professional people too? Everybody, everyone wow. is a professional. Everybody. Wow. We went to schools, to college. So the great thing about America is the melting pot of people from all over the world come here and they make America a better place, right? It uh, is. It uh, is. In my opinion, America is number one and will always be number one. I consider America the number one. It was before, it was, it's now, and I think it's going to be uh, forever. And we can make it even better, but um, we're not perfect either. We, we have some, some problems, and we still have to work on them. Oh, yes. We have some. But uh, I think, like you say, uh, everybody have to do something, and, and at the end, we, we're going to have a. And a you're American. a proven success that if you work for something, you get more out of life. Um, my wife and I were once very poor. We lived in Yonkers. We lived in a ghetto section, Getty Square, although it wasn't a ghetto then. <laughs> uh, but we didn't know that we were poor, but we both worked, and we achieved the goal to own a house one day and to, to have good jobs and through education and through the opportunity that America affords you. You can get ahead here, and you can do very well. It's not like some countries that have a class system or where sir, only the top 1% can achieve greatness, <laughs> yeah. if, if you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> like some of the Middle Eastern countries where if you're oh, a member yeah. of the royal family or you're a member of uh, Castro's family in Cuba, uh, the oh, top 1% yeah. uh, seem to get all the riches and the average people get uh, you know, $80 a month. That's what I hear the average salary in Cuba is right now. And, and that's the marriage they made with Russia for 60 years. And I think our president is pretty smart that he's mm -hmm. thawing the relationship with Raul Castro. Oh, Raul, yeah, now we're going to get to international politics. I don't know how that happens. Well, Venezuela, too, is following now. Uh, what's going to happen in Cuba. What happened in Cuba, uh, uh, Venezuela is happening right now. So Yeah, when you have tourists coming from America and spending money there, they will see more of the capitalist way again, and maybe they will get away from the socialism and the communism there. I don't think the people who want to do that, I think no. it's, a, it's a government who is yeah, uh, forcing the them to do the Castro, whatever they want. Yeah. Castro. Raul does not seem as bad as uh, Fidel was, you know. No, I don't think. I don't know if he's still alive or not. But He's still alive, but yeah, he's, still he's alive. in the background. <laughs> but let's get back to... Um, security in America and why companies such as yours and mm -hmm. people need to have services such as security cameras. What else do you do, do besides security cameras? Uh, we do alarm systems, alarm monitoring system. to alarm systems. Uh, something like a company called ADT? Yeah, that, uh, something like that. Similar to them. Well, it's, uh, I think I would do something better. But oh, okay. We use better equipment. We do yeah. uh, better services. Probably more reasonably cost. Yes. Too, but I really can't promote your company. You're here to Yeah, I know. That, that the only thing is uh, ADT have uh, 
more people who sell, you know, oh, sure. advertising and, and national advertising. advertising. So that's the reason. But if, uh, if we had to compare, it really, we, we are better. But your personalized service—that's the difference. You, you're the owner of the company. People can you're call right. you. They can call you any. Yeah, in fact, do you have a telephone number or a? Um, website where people can reach you in case yes. my viewers, my vast viewers, have any questions about security. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you'll give them a free consultation yes. the first time, right? Yes, I have a website. We'll we have a can you repeat them for us, uh, Francisco? Well, the number of telephone? Yeah, yeah, that would be okay. Uh, it's 914-402-4488. Uh -huh. And your website? The website is uh, www.proselectsecurity.com. And if people think they are safe without any uh, uh, AD t a any system, um, well, when you say the ADT is right, because a lot of people have that in the back in the yeah, mind, that you they know, just it's kind of like that. that. But uh, it's not it's not different. I just want to tell the people when it's they similar. they, they is is equipment is nothing different. The monitoring is cheaper. Mm -hmm. We don't sign a loan contracts, and uh -huh. again, like you say, we are there for you all the time, 24-hour response. So you give personal and personal service. also. It's not like a 800 number, and that person is living in in California, and you're never going to see that person. You know, or the the person you who will install personalized, it. hands-on service. Yes, and I, okay. that's right. Okay. What more do you want to talk about? I've about run out of questions. We still have about five minutes to go. Is there anything I've overlooked that you wanted to bring up tonight, Francisco? Well, about my business? About about anything, your business, your... Well, I think people uh, about people uh, they have to realize they, uh, I know it's an, an expensive uh, security system when they think it's not something they don't have in the priority on the first list or page. Mm -hmm. They put it in the back because they think it's nothing really important. I think when you uh, get to the point when you have your home, when you have your business, you want to be able to watch and monitor what's going on there when you are there and when you are not there. This is not about to, to check only the Especially employees. Especially uh, a business with employee theft. We hate to think of a employee theft, but a uh, monitoring system can watch. Uh, mm. most most and, and I know people who own business who can be in their own house monitoring what their employees are doing in the retail business. They, they do it all the time. Most of the 90% of the, the business uh, owners, w that's, that's what they do. They see how the business is running. It's, you know, they can see in the, f in the phone. Do you m uh, install systems into businesses as yeah, well? We do, oh, we do, do? A, we do a, a homes and business, both. Do you have many people working for you, or are you no? I, I have a, a the part time. People? Yeah, I have yeah. one or two yeah. that can okay. work with so me. So you're small, right? Mm -hmm. You're a small That's business cool. man. That's what America was built on: two thousands upon thousands of small businesses. And as you know, it's not because you think it's a small business; only one or two people working. You think you're not going to install five buildings, uh, like six feet, the six floors. Wow. When you see that huge, you know, thousand apartments there, you say, mm -hmm. how these company can do that? They only have two people. And you travel all over Westchester County and part of Putnam, I've heard. Yeah, I do all Westchester County and that. Putnam, mm -hmm. we do that. Mm -hmm. But again, going back to, to the, what I was talking about is engineering. You had to do a lot of engineering here sometimes because you had to use a lot of technology equipment they have. You so one cable, you have one cable, coax cable, they can transmit 30 cameras from that and they go from mm -hmm. one building to another building 600 feet and then you have 30 cameras here, 30 cameras here. So you don't need all these wires, all these connectors. You don't need to yeah. hire 20 wireless. employees. Wireless, you got wireless with the computers. We have wireless now. but we're not selling it because we, they're not secure because you know, if something happened important in that time, you lose that and you don't have any backup. Something uh, amazing on a commercial I saw, w it was either Optimum or Files. Somebody's having a problem with their TV set and they can do through the computer now. They can see into your house, uh, supposedly in this commercial, and say, no, you got to put that yellow wire into that thing, and their TV is fixed. <laughs> and I've experienced something like that with the company I have, that mm -hmm. all you have to do is call a 611 number, and, and they can help you fix it without sending a serviceman out. That is amazing. Yeah, that's the, that's the future, that's the technology now. Yeah. All these apps they have in the phones, it's, it's easy. Yeah. to do it. Um, okay, so you came to America 16 years ago? Yeah, 16 yeah. years ago. 
and you're a successful businessman, we found out that immigrants can make can it make in it. America, and we do not have to deport <laughs> everybody. A certain guy running for president, I shouldn't get pol political, but it's so wrong to want to deport people, you know. I think this country is made from immigrants, and um, everybody had to feel that. Yes. Everybody had to feel in that way. Italian immigrants who were who helped build America, uh, Irish, Irish, African American mm -hmm. people. Everybody. Um, um, everybody. It's a melting pot of everybody, and that's what makes America great. Francisco Calderon, you've been a great guest on the George On Deck tonight Thank show you. tonight. What do you say to my vast audience in closing? It was Robo very George. nice to come here. To I know you for a long time, and uh, it's been an Thank honor you. to have a friend <laughs> and somebody who could give his expertise on security to my audience. Any time when you want it. In the and future. then once again, how they can contact you? Oh, they can call me to uh, nine one four. 402-4488, or they can uh, go to my website, www.proselectsecurity.com. My audience, uh, good night for now. Remember, stay safe, stay secure. Uh, it's been an honor to have Mr. Calderon on my TV show. Until next time, be safe and honor America, the George Ondek Show. Thank you and good night. <laughs>